Hello Year 11 and welcome to our video about the split ring commutator. First, a reminder of Fleming's left hand rule. If one arranges one's fingers like this, where your first two fingers and your thumb are all at right angles to each other, where the second finger represents the direction of the current flowing, and your first finger represents the direction of the magnetic field from north to south, your thumb will represent the direction of the force being exerted on the wire that's carrying that current. So in this picture that's upwards. All right, let's have another look at the motors you made the other day. You'll remember you had the red wire wrapped around the blue rectangle with the two ends sticking out on the same side. These are called the split ring commutator, you'll see why in a minute. And then you had two uh, green wires that were sticking up either side of the split ring commutator. These from now on will be called the brushes. Let's have a look at what a diagram of your motor would look like. So we've got the magnet, the same as on your actual motor. We've got the red wire that's coiled around the blue rectangle here. And then over this side, we've got the split ring commutator, which you can see on the diagram is drawn as a ring shape that has been split in half. That's a bit different to the motors that you made. And then the brushes, rather than just being those single, single sorry, sticky uppy wires that you had, uh, they're drawn as these cubes that are touching the split ring commutator. So at the moment you can see that the circuit is connected, we've got the current flowing, uh, conventional current flowing from the positive terminal of the cell or the power supply around to the negative end. All right, so what does a split ring commutator do? Um, so well, first, let's just have a look at the motor. We can see that on the right hand side at the moment, the wire that's on the right hand side, the current is moving away from us. The magnetic field is moving from north to south. And so you at home should check Fleming's left hand rule. And if you do that, you'll see that this side of the motor will be forced upwards. And so it will move around in a circle over the top. This side, we've got the current moving in the opposite direction. Obviously the magnetic field is still the same, but the current's moving in the opposite direction. And so this side will be forced downwards, as long as there is a current flowing through those two wires. So the motor will spin. You remember the motor you built, once it's been spun 90 degrees, the brushes will lose contact with the split ring. And so the current will stop flowing. And now the important bit. The momentum of the motor will carry it on spinning until this side is closer to the south pole of the magnet. And when that happens, what we want is for this side to have flipped over the top and then we want it forced downwards so the motor keeps spinning in the same direction. In order to achieve that, we've got to have the current moving towards us on this side of the motor down this wire. And so what happens is the split ring loses contact with the right hand brush and as the motor continues to spin it will make contact with the left hand brush. And similarly the left hand side of the split ring will lose contact with the left hand brush and make contact with this brush here. That will ensure that by the time this wire has spun 180 degrees the current will be flowing towards us and so the wire will be forced downwards and the motor can keep spinning in the same direction. And then of course the split ring will lose contact with the left hand brush, will make contact with the right hand brush and the current will change direction on this side again. It will be moving away from us so it will be forced upwards and then downwards and upwards and downwards and so on. So the motor spins. 